It's time for Quick Calls with Mike the Ref on the Edmonton Sports Podcast Network. Oh my god. Oh, sorry. I guess I'm recording already. It's Mike the Ref here at the Northgate Line Senior Center. My god, I'm absolutely exhausted right now after the uh, PWA Fall Fever show where I think the best way we're going to call this tonight is a night out of nowhere uh, yeah. for a lot of things here. But we're joined by, uh, I believe it's the resident uh, captain of the IHF Tyler Fan Club, Andre C. I am the commissioner of the face of the soon-to-be Facebook group, the hashtag I Hate Jeff Tyler Club. I am Andre C., and I am here. Oh, boy. That, you know it's you know it's getting serious when Facebook groups are getting involved here. <laughs> but then of course we got the wrestling mind Brian Hamilton with it. Oh my God! Hi guys, what a great show! Yeah, it it started off great as far as I was concerned, but no, it really didn't. Um, yeah, it, did. it was a good but, match. It was a good. It was a fair match. We had six. We had six top notch matches here tonight, including a match that I, I I can honestly say out well, even possibly including the ending could be a match of the year candidate here. Yep. Uh, in our main event, but let's go through them one by one, and we'll we'll break it down here for you. Break it down, y'all. <laughs> anyway, coming out first, we had your favorite Jeff Tyler. I hate Jeff Tyler. Take- if you don't know, I have a giant sign that says it. We'll we'll get some picks up for you folks, but um. He was taking on Brandon Van Danielson, one half of the PWA champions. That still sounds weird for me to say it, but... He's the half, one half of the PWA champion. Now, this was this was a hell of a matchup here. Um, I mentioned in my last blown call show that I, I thought he would really... Really wouldn't... Uh, dis- Jeff Tyler would not disappoint here in this match. No, so, sorry, I got, pe- I got people running around here constantly here. It's, people are falling out here. Um, it was... It was a position there where Brandon Van Danielson had the win. He hit the lariat on Tyler, but then he got greedy. He wanted to get more. And then all of a sudden gets rolled up in a small package out of nowhere. One, two, three. And your winner is the high flyer, the sky flyer, Jeff Tyler. Now, I I know Andre was about ready to throw things and get all consternated at this. Um, He's composed himself since that was the first match of the card. What are your thoughts, sir? First off, hashtag I hate Jeff Tyler. But I, I have to say, this match was great. I thought, as I always said, great high paced match to ever show. This was it. Uh, the crowd's like in one show, after one show, and in, in his second show, this crowd is hugely behind Jeff Tyler. Like, it, it's, it's plainly obvious, right? But it, it was, I thought these guys are great. But BVD made the mistake a lot of people in the past have made. He. He made the stupid mistake in, after you hit your finisher, pin them. Simple as that. But he got greedy, wanted to hit him with another move. I don't know what it was. I think it was, I think he was setting up for a second lariat, and that's so, what ended up... And, second- yeah, and he, he got greedy, and... Out of Jeff nowhere. Ty- out of nowhere, Jeff Tyler gets the small package, gets the victory, and I can't, I can't say I hate... I don't like it, but... I gotta respect it because BVD he screwed up. Yeah, Brian, your thoughts? Oh, what it was! What a great match to start the show off. BVD and Jeff Tyler. My God, and Jeff Tyler picking up the upset win over BVD. You, you know, this should put him in a line for a title shot down the line because he beat one half of the co-holders of the tie, tie, title tonight. So I mean. That definitely should put him in a, a line for a title shot. And like I said, yeah, a very good match. BVD, he made a mistake. Jeff capitalized, rolled up him in a small package and got the huge upset win tonight. Great for him. Now, I've heard a lot of great things about Jeff Tyler coming out of Saskatchewan with HIW. And um, it's great to see him in Alberta. And just seeing these fans gravitate him to him so quickly, and you're speaking about that title match, we're going to get to that at the end of the yeah, show here. My God. But let's get to our second match here, and it involved, I, I'm not sure, I believe it's two fan favorites here. Yeah. You had Dirty Duke Durango, who... I only know of one fan favorite in this match. Well, 
Durango flips back and forth a he's, lot. He's Dirty Duke Durango. He will always be dirty. I will never trust that man. Yeah, well, Andre, you also cheer for BVD, so that's beside the point here. Anyway, he was taking on Bryce the Slammer Sova in a, a, a classic match with two people that are very experienced in the ring. Um, One very, very much more experienced because he's old as, as F. <sighs> Yes, folks, I'm going to... Yeah, never mind. Um, this match here, S- Slammer eventually ended up showing his dominance and just his training in uh, in bodybuilding and weightlifting has paid off, managed to gain the advantage, and then hit the GTS, as he calls it, the go-to slam. Um, for those that are listening to the podcast that weren't here, think of Wade Barrett's Wasteland in a certain version, except... Okay, it, I'll explain exactly okay, what this move is. Go ahead. You set up like the GTS, he lifts him up and off and up and forward like you would go and throw the knee, but then you pull him in like a, like the world's strongest slam and go down with it. That's the same. Like a GTS into a world's strongest slam. Think about that. Okay. This yeah. one this one ended up looking a little bit more like GTS into waistline, yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's sort of like that. Still was effective and still got the one, two, three here. Uh, Brian, I'm going to let you go first. Your thoughts? Oh, I thought it was a great match between these two. You had, a, had the veteran and Duke Durango, and the well guests were both veterans. And uh, Slammer, he got the win over a very tough opponent tonight in du- Dirty Duke Durango. But great second match. Had the crowd going into it. Both kind of fan favorites, I get you would say, because the crowd was kind of getting behind both guys. But in the end, Slammer picked up a huge win tonight. Great for him. It, it, it's, 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 fi- it's nice to finally see Slammer in an actual match here in Edmonton. Yeah, you know, let, let, let's not remind ourselves of what happened last month. <laughs> yeah, pose down. But it, I, I really enjoyed this. It kept the crowd's energy going. You had both pe- all the crowds just split back and forth for these guys. There was that whole uh, who can get the better pop off the start. It's a fun match. And Slammer, that go to slam, I love that move. I still remember the first time I heard about the move. And I saw a picture of a broken ring because of it. So, trust me, that move is deadly because he's broken a ring with it. Absolutely. And um, I can't wait to see how this is going to line up with... Uh, the Mayhem champion, Bobby Sharp, who, I might as well throw it out right now, I want to give a shout out to both uh, the Lime Warrior, Bobby Sharp, and Kat Von Hees, who actually uh, got married today. Uh, yes. that, hence the reason they weren't on this card here, Happy folks. nuptials. Exactly. Happy nuptials, unfortunately, they had to do it in Winnipeg, yeah. which I'll, I'll, throw, I'll, I'll save my comments on that one for later. But let's move on to match number three here. Now, this has been a grudge match that's been going on, well, for, in, in our sense, over a year now. But in the PWA, it's, this is the third month it's gone into here. you got uh, Sheik Akbar Shabazz taking on Tiger Ali. Now, in this match, we actually saw a side of Tiger that we have never seen before. It was a rush. Tiger rushed into the ring and jump-started the match. But basically, out of nowhere, just... Completely attacked um, Sheik Akbar, and both these guys beat the holy hell out of each other throughout this match. Yep. But then, out of nowhere, once again, as our theme of the night. Well, ty- it, it's it's not out of nowhere because he kind of ha- well, it kind of was. Well, he, there was a he was going before there. Out of nowhere, the music came on of the Omen, and some video came on the main screen showing a grave of Omen with the uh, date of birth and the date of death being 2017. 1923 to 2017. I'm glad you saw it better than I did. So so then the lights come up, a little bit of distraction. She goes for a clothesline. Tiger turns it into a crucifix, pulls him around, gets the one, two, three on the roll up. Yeah. Now let's talk about the match before we see what happened after the match. Okay, so I thought these guys had the singular, uh, to me, the best match I've seen these two have so far over the last year. Seen these two, like I said, we've been seeing another place was fighting, but I think this is the best one I've seen between the two yet. And I think it just keeps getting better, and that's great. Uh, these guys are doing phenomenal. Brian? Oh, I thought this was a really good match between the two. His back and forth, and in the end, Tiger got a huge win. He beat Sheik with a little bit of a distraction, and now 
Next month. Yeah, yeah next month. So after the match, the place goes fade to black once again. And all of a sudden, the picture of the grave comes back up. Jeff Rollins is with, here? With the... Yeah, <laughs> love you too. Uh, except the, the death date is crossed out. And all of a sudden, it comes up Fright Night. Gabe, the omen's back. R.I.P. Chic. The best part about this was the crowd. Started, we all started chanting, R.I.P., R.I.P. Rest, rest in peace. And, That's we, all and was. the crowd was just chanting it. It, was, it. it felt so natural and perfect. It wasn't like we were fed a chant. It just felt natural because the crowd wanted to pick up and do that. It just well, felt so good. The big thing is the Sheik is the wrestler that brings that out of most fans here in the PWA more than anybody so um, this was a fantastic match and fantastic inclusion and I can't wait to hear what uh, what happens here coming up at Fright Night October 28th between these two but let's move on to our fourth match and it was for the PWA Tag Team Championships a rematch from last month where you had the Millennial Rebels of Colton Rebel. Kelly and Reed Matthews, the thickness, taking on Richie Rage and Andrew Hawks. Now, this match started a little more evenly than last month, yeah. where uh, there was no jump starting or anything. It ends up being like a 35 on 1. And I'm going to say 35 on 1. It was probably close to a 60 on 1. 5 but. on 2. Uh, fair enough. There's only 5 rebels. The, the key moment in the match was the Rebels actually stayed as a team on, on the apron while the distractions came on the outside. Andrew Hawks ends up clocking Raymond Vanstone. I, ho- I to- really hope he's okay. That man needs to... Okay, obviously, we heard later on he was, but the, the man's all about his voice, so if that, he hurts his jaw, he can't speak. Which is a God, good thing. God, I wish he would hit him in the jaw. Me but, too. But because he was doing this, he wasn't in the corner available for a tag from Richie Rage... All of a sudden, there's the tag from Colton on to Reed. Hits the sit-out powerbomb, followed by the senton by Kelly and the frog splash by Matthews for the 1-2-3. After the match, there was a little bit of bitterness between Rage and Hawks. And I I don't know what's going to happen with these two. It seems like they're getting like, on a bitter edge. Like They were this close. Like, like I'm talking like an inch... Away from coming to blows. Like, like the I, length of one of my hairs? What hair? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but your thoughts on the match, Andre? Ah, uh, dude, the, these two, the, like, these two teams just killed it. Like, I'm a huge Rebel, Rebels fan, but, like, Hawks and Rage, I, I've been watching Hawks for years. It, these guys, like, Hawks, like, I, got, I have to single out Hawks. He is truly one of the best guys in this company, no matter what, who he's in the ring with. He always makes a phenomenal match. Doesn't matter who. And Rage... So good, so powerful. Rebels, you, they just keep improving. They're in. You got two guys that grew up in this business. You got Reed Matthews, who just keeps getting better and better. You got Raymond Vanstone, the, the the voice. And then you have the time traveling millennial in Doctor Kyoto. My God, let's not even get started on that. I I, I can smell the BS flowing here, but um, Brian, your thoughts. Oh, overall, it wasn't a bad match, but like you said, though, the Hawks and Rage, they, they were mostly on the page until the end when, well, Rage went after Van Stone and left his partner to, well, actually, uh, Hawks went after Van Stone and left Rage all alone, and, and, and it cost them the t- a chance at the titles, and, well, yeah, like Andre said, Rebels, they, every time we see them, they're getting better and better, the stable is getting a lot bigger and that, and... Yeah, so it's very good for them. They keep the titles, but wow. Millennials now, unite. I, I guess. But now we, go, we got into intermission. Coming out of intermission, we had the Commonwealth title being defended by Kenneth Anthony. Kenneth, as a, the Fury Anthony. Well, he didn't get announced as the Fury in this match. But so he's that, still uh, Taking on Kenny Stryker. Kenny versus Kenny. Yeah, so everybody was cheering for Kenny, and yeah, I guess everybody won. Um, yep. Once again, the numbers factor kicked in. Uh, Colton Kelly, you had Reed Matthews at ringside, Dr. Kyoto, 
I'm sure there was like 12 other people underneath the ring. Seriously, boy. In the end, there was a, from the outside of the ring to the inside, suplex got reversed. And with Colton Kelly holding the ankle, there was a 1-2-3, and Kenneth Anthony retains his championship. No, it was Kyoto holding the ankle, actually. Oh, it was Kyoto? Kyoto. Because as he went for the suplex, uh, uh, Ken- uh, Kenneth turned, Kyoto grabbed the foot, and that was it. But right. Either way, a rebel caused it. A rebel grabbed it. So, Go ahead. Uh, I thought, great match. Kenny Stryker looking phenomenal as always. Kenneth Anthony, one of the best up-and-comers in the business. These two had a great match, and it's just with that finish, you can see it, it is a numbers game. The Rebels know how to make the numbers work. There's all, especially I, I'm happy with the expansion with, with Dr. Kyoto coming in because he adds another element to them because he is a lot wiser than them, help, and he knows all the tricks that has to be played to help manage somebody to championships and what and to keep managing what and keeping them hold the championship. Yeah, I get. I guess we're gonna have to call him a time traveling millennial, though, right? Right. The '80s leather jacket, the '90s hitman glasses, 2000 scar- or 2010 the, scarf, 2010 scarf, and that hat from the '60s, I do believe. But yeah, I'll, pork, I'll, I'll that, di- pork, that pork pie hat. I'll uh, I'll digress at that point. Uh, Brian, your thoughts on the match? Oh, overall, it was a great match uh, between these two. It's back and forth. Fury, though, at the beginning, it looked like he didn't want any part of Striker because he was. Taking a lot of time on the outside before he would lock up, but in the end, no. Uh, when it's basically five on one, Kenny had no chance. He, uh, the odds played in favor of uh, Kenneth tonight. He got the win, but then Kenny Stryker, he actually took a major beatdown at the end when all all the all five of them attacked him at the end and pretty much laid him out. Now. Just want to bring up one point here, and I want to I want to give a special emphasis to a particular wrestler in this match. Um, this has got to be one of the better performances I've seen out of Kenneth Anthony. Now, he's been a great wrestler. He's been a great great mind in this business when it comes to strategy in the ring. But his performance tonight, I I particularly enjoyed more than I've seen in a while. Like he's been very consistent, very good, but. This just went to another level here, as far oh, as I was sure. concerned. For sure. As, as much as I razz on these guys, I have a lot of respect for the Rebels and what they've done and what they've altered in, uh, in the uh, PWA here. Yeah. And basically taking it to the next level in 2017. Yeah, it's true. It, it, they've really evolved as a team. Like, you can see... They're, they weren't the like they weren't the most cohesive team. Say like a year ago when they kind of came together, or a year and a half, whatever, two years ago, whatever it was. But they flow so well together. Like they all know where they need to be and need, and they know where to help out and everything. And then I think the Kyoto edition is just the knowledge that man has from all his years in this business. It's just going to improve that team like you wouldn't believe. Absolutely and. Um, and for the record, Colton Kelly is not a spot monkey. He did a great job in this match tonight. Yes. No, no, in, in, in he's a spot tonight. gorilla. Oh my, uh, Andre, you're, let, let's make this clear. Andre said that. Colton, please do not kill us. Um, but speaking of things that were amazing tonight, my God, that main event. Holy crap! Sean Moore, Michael Richard Blaze. I I mentioned, like I said on my blown call show, that this could be a shocker of a match. This could be match of the year, and there is a high possibility that this will be. So yeah, we're when it comes to this match, we're gonna have to break it down into three stages here because there are three clear stages in this match. It's a three three stages of hell. No, three stages of heaven as far as we're concerned as fans. Now, the first one is gonna be before the bell here. Yeah. Match starts with well, match doesn't start. The conflict starts with a super kick from Michael Richard Blaze onto Sean Moore, sending him loopy and to the outside. Yep. Uh, beating him senseless outside, sending him into the wall, and then pile driving him through the uh, timekeeper's table at ringside. Yep. My, I, I honestly didn't think that Moore was going to be able to get up out of that. He did, um, though. He's got the guts. He's got the guts, and he gutted it out. The drag. 
Because then you got Emmerby grab the mic and he starts sp- talking how nobody can hang with him. Nobody's good enough for a match. The crowd doesn't deserve a match. And then you see Sean Moore get up and he will not quit. He ain't, and as much I, as I, I, I you, be- know, you know my love for Emmerby. I believe the B word was used by MRB that caused the yeah, final. Yeah, but I'm, I don't want to speak to that kind of stuff. Speak to that. But he, and you see, you see more. he was... A prime, he more. more. I'm sorry, I'm so so sorry. More, more had just the guts in it, just just pulled everything from down need to get back in that ring. And by God, what came next? He lined, mm. he lined up MRB ju- just as MRB is asking for the bell to be rung. He hits him with a super, super. kick right on the chin. I am not sure if all I think the chicklets it was just are left after the bell. No, because the bell rang. After the after they were separated, oh, after the, kick, the yeah. bell the bell rang, and all of a sudden there was a cover right away, and you looked a little worried I, there. At that I point. honestly was like, the kick was brutal. Um, Very. So let's get to the match here, and we'll 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 get your thoughts, Brian, here once we get into the yeah. match here. My my God, this match, the moves these guys were pulling off, the story they were telling throughout the match. Regardless of the interference by uh, Connie Lynn Blaze, Jeff Tyler, eh, you have to bring that up. Hey, he Bra- did Brandon, in this Brandon match. Van Danielson, and the Rebels. The Re- the Rebels eventually, but before hey. before before all that kerfluffle happened with everybody coming from the back. My God, the stuff these guys were pulling out, super kicks. Kicks all over. The brain buster from MRB looked especially vicious. The uh, reverse Rana uh, oh. on the ground. Then the reverse Rana off the top. Sean Moore pulls both of those off on MRB, and we we thought he we thought Blaze was dead. Oh man, like I, I was I honestly thought he was losing the title. A bl- Blaze hit his 450. Only got a two. Only got a one count out of that. Yeah, like Moore just, just popped right out. Like just hulked right out of that spot, and it. I honestly thought there was going to be a title change. I said that earlier this week, and I honestly thought it was going to come true during this match. And but, I, th- I think you were sweating bullets a little bit there, too. But BVD interfered, wasn't enough. Con- Connie Lynn interfered, wasn't enough. The Rebels, in, uh, the Rebels as in uh, Colton uh, Kelly and Reed, Kelly Matthews. Reed Matthews interfered, wasn't enough. Now, was, what had happened? Jeff Tyler interfered, it wasn't enough for Sean Moore. So ends up... Moore ends up hitting his finisher on MRB, gets him laid out. Tyler's bringing the referee into the ring. Kenneth Anthony comes from out of the back, hits Sean Moore in the back of the head, and the referee sees it, causing the disqualification. Yeah. And leading a, how do I put this, a complete cluster you-know-what Yeah. Uh, with ten different guys in the ring, or sorry, nine different guys in the ring, plus the referee. Yeah. And... Before we get well, to no, what... There was only seven at that point, and then out came Rage and Hawks. Which made, to, made, it, made nine. it nine. Which just... It just oh, my God. Let's talk to your women. Yeah, it, it, it was just... Whoa, some crazy... And, and they just all just started brawling. And it is nuts. Well, before we get to the end of that, guys, I want your thoughts on the main event match. Brian, your thoughts on the main event match? Oh, just the match. The, the match was just totally chaotic, insane, crazy. High flying moves, kicks, move for move. My God, these two went out of it. In the end, Moore was about half an inch away from taking that title, and when all hell broke loose, it's like I told Andre, MRB and BVD, the only way they know how to win is by cheating to keep the title. Contra point, Mr. It, Andre. It ain't it ain't winning if you ain't cheating. Okay, back but it up. What's your thoughts? The match was was phenomenal. Yes. Like these guys went it move was. for move. Like I've been a, a fan of Sean Moore for a long time. Don't get me wrong. This guy is probably one of the best PWA has ever had in the ring outside of MRB. But like like these two just ha- put on. I arguably can say one of it's in my is now is one of my match of the year contenders for PW for my indie wrestling matches of the year or for our local stuff at the end of our podcast. But like phenomenal. Just for not least, two every move they hit, like we talked about the reverse Ranas, the four fifties, the that 
Sean Moore splash, the super kicks, Sean Moore hitting that corner, the trapped head, the trapped head super kick on MRB, just everything. I hope this is this is going to be on one of the best of the year DVDs that Peter Boy puts out. It has to be. Oh, absolutely! And like, like I think this match would go up against any match you would have seen anywhere this weekend. Definitely. And I, I'm talking about matches that haven't even happened yet. Like when a you're WWE ta- house show. Like you're, No, I'm talking about like ICW in England going on tomorrow. but Or whatever that's WWE a, house shows happening in the world. But let's get to the aftermath. Commissioner Andy Anderson, hashtag fire Andy, uh, comes out. Hashtag greatest commissioner of all time. <sighs> comes out and uh, he makes a match for Fright Night coming up, October 28th. You have five men on one side. You got Brandon Van Danielson, Michael Richard Blaze, Kenneth Anthony, Reed Matthews, and Colton Kelly. Everybody with gold. And on the other side, you have four men Jeff Tyler, Boo, Sean Moore, Yay, and Rage and Hawks. I'm okay with them. And, okay. and that should have so, been it. The match was made. That should have been it. Everybody should have went home. Yeah, okay. Let's just say Mr. Kurt Sorokin comes out, the COO of PWA, who, let's face it, he's the man that runs the show regardless. The board of directors took away his matchmaking powers and gave them to Andy Anderson. And as soon as Andy Anderson said it, Mr. Sorokin mentioned, on behalf of the board of directors, Commissioner Andy Anderson is suspended 30 days. 30. Pending... Pending a review following those 30 days on his behavior, so he but will... He didn't n- the, the review the, at first. The review, yes, but, you know, good things come to those who wait, and this was a great thing. Uh, the review will not be done until November, so therefore Andy Anderson will not be available at Fright Night, so... Hashtag justice for Andy. Uh, no, that's not going to happen. Um so Mr. Sorokin throws in a little stipulation. If one of the non the one of the members of the non-title team gets the pinfall, the belt switch hands. All of them. Like everything, all the gold switching switching around here, folks. We could have four new champions of three titles in one match. Jeff Tyler does not deserve gold. Okay, we'll just He's only had Four matches in total in this company. He does not deserve a title yet. Thank you for your polite opinion, Andre. Brian, what are your thoughts on everything that wrapped up there? Oh, my God. What what a chaotic way to finish. When you had nine guys going at it, and then you had Kurt and and Andy going back and forth. Wow, I cannot wait till for Fright Night. I mean, who knows what's going to happen. A nine-man elimination match for for all the belts on the line. It's gonna be insane. Who knows what the heck is gonna happen? Like, uh, but I'm hoping like we get new champions because, like Andre was saying, Jeff he doesn't deserve a title, but in my mind he does. He beat tonight. He beat BVD for a t- like. He so beat it, one of the champions. Exactly. So it puts him in line. Period. All right. Well, we'll leave that there because we could be so fighting what, so about what this. You're thing. Is when okay. They, well, when these title scenes end. Jeff Tyler should get the PWA Championship. Is that what you're saying? We'll oh, we'll see who gets we'll the see. cover, and we'll we'll divvy it up from there if that happens. It ain't Any, gonna happen. A, anyway, it ain't going to happen. Anyway, the next PWA show is the Fright Night show on October 28th. Oh, oh. If you've listened to the network, I have a, had an erroneous date of October 21st. So, we guess who's in charge of that podcast? Me. Uh, actually, T. James Logan said he might be stopping by to help out. So. <laughs> Anyway, we we'll get to He'll that in just a, with you. we'll get to that at the end here. Just um, we got a very important part to get to here. It's our highlights of the night and surprise of the night. All right, Brian, time for you to go first here. Uh, what what was your highlight of the night? My highlight of the night was opening match between BVD and Jeff Tyler. Uh, well, oh, I'm holding Andre back here. Yeah, so this was a great time. match between the two, and like like I said, on uh, BVD. One little mistake in the end, it cost him the match. Huge victory for Jeff Tyler, which, in my opinion, this should put Jeff right in line for a title shot. He beat one half of the PWA champions, so perfect. All right, Andre, time for your highlight of the night. Yeah, I'm, you're, you're, I'm going off book. Uh, P, the tight the tight and title match. All right. What? Yeah, the, the, like I've been a huge fan of the Rebels for a long time, and 
I thought just great overall match, and all these guys in the ring are doing phenomenal things. And I just, I kind of like the way it finished, and I'm just wondering what we're looking at between Hawks and Rage. Is this going? Is their rift going to continue, or? Oh, is it, I'll do it. If, it, if, it, if is it going to continue, or is it what's going to happen? That's what I'm looking. That's why this is my highlight of the night. Fair enough. Um, I'm I'm going to take uh, Ryan Hernandez's uh, spot as well. Um, all right, so I'm taking two here. So my first one's going to be the Commonwealth title match between Kenny Stryker and Kenneth Anthony. Uh, like I said, Ke- Kenneth to me. Has hit, his game was on another level tonight, and it showed. Um, regardless of the finish, this was a great match that he pulled out here. And then, of course, we got to go with the main event. Yes. Um, outside of that finish, it was an absolute gangbusters of a uh, gang a gangbusters of a match that very well could be the match of the year in Alberta this year. Very. Um, but then let's go to our surprise tonight, and I'm just going to call the matches like. The match is set up for Fright Night. Sure. Uh, you got Gabriel taking on Sheik Akbar Shabazz, and you got the elimination match for all the titles. It that's going to be a um, humdinger of a chance there. So, um, but that's going to wrap up the uh, that's going to wrap up the podcast here. Andre's out uh, souvenir hunting right now. Um, I think he's got a piece of plywood he wants to hit Jeff Tyler with, so I've got to go chase him down. Um, I want to thank the wrestling mind, Brian Hamilton, for joining me here. Oh, always a pleasure, and I cannot wait to do this again. Um, coming up on the network, uh, I am going to have a blown call show this week, and after watching the football games in the CFL over the last couple weeks, um, there definitely is a, uh, a blown call, and uh, I'll get more into that when I... Uh, when I get onto my show sometime this week. Also, uh, I was in talks with uh, the legend T. James Logan, and he's going to be sending me some uh, interviews that he had in regards to this show, including Andre's favorite wrestler, Jeff Tyler. This I thought you meant Michael Richard Blaze. Is that um, cheater? It's not cheating if the ref don't e- catch you. Either way, um, our next Quick Call show is actually not going to be coming until October. With the Monster Pro Wrestling Show from the Alberta Avenue Hall. Uh, we could have a bunch of other stuff coming up here. Don't forget the Sounds of Struggle podcast as well. And uh, um, I don't know. There's gonna there's a whole bunch of stuff planning to come down the pipe here. So we'll, we'll see what happens. So make sure you check out that as well as next weekend's CWC Evolution Show. Featuring the ladder match between Chris Parrish and Jack Pride for the CWC Championship. That, that's going to be a humdinger for you to see. But on behalf of everybody, oh, I guess I forgot the most important part. Our big announcements, thanks to the little bit of a change here in uh, scheduling for some of the events, we're going to have two special dates for announcements. The first one is going to be November 4th at the MPW Retribution Quick Calls, where um, Andre C. and I are going to discuss our new podcast we're doing in 2018, as well as a very special announcement on behalf of us in Monster Pro Wrestling. And then the other big announcement we're going to have is on the 17th of November from the Canuck Pro Show in Calgary. That's going to all by yourself. That's going to affect. Oh, I'm right too. That's going to affect everything in the network here, folks. And there's there's a reason why I'm doing it down there. So you're going to have to check it out to find out. So on behalf of everybody here at Edmonton SPN, I want to thank you for joining us on Quick Calls. And don't forget, if you're going to make a good call, make a quick call. And this has been Quick Calls from. PWA Fall Fever for the Northgate Lions Senior Center here on the Edmonton Sports Podcast Network. This has been Quick Calls with Mike the Ref on the Edmonton Sports Podcast Network. Contact us on Facebook or check out edmontonspn.podbean.com.